The floor is open for question or comments, if you wish. Please go ahead. Mr. Delic uh, spoke in uh, uh, Montenegrin, so I would also like to use uh, this, this language to ask the following. Isn't it painful to um, spend so much money in Montenegro? You could use some of the experience of Bosnia and Herzegovina, and I'm sure you would come up with a better solution. And my second question is, are you building a temporary settlement because you are unwilling to provide permanent housing for Roma in that area? Well, we would prefer not to have any need to have this temporary solution, but together with the European Commission, we decided to resolve the issue of the Koning One camp permanently. Uh, the financial structure for this settlement amounts to 3 million euros. Uh, the EU will provide 2 million euros and uh, Montenegrin government and other uh, organizations, the remaining one million. But the fire uh, erupted, as I told you, and destroyed what we have. And we uh, only wish we could wait for two years for these 90 apartments to be built, which will be a permanent solution. But we have to bridge the period in between. We need to put these people somewhere for two years. And what was your second question? The question was whether you are going for a temporary solution because you are unwilling to have them there permanently. Well, no, they will stay there. They will stay in Vrela Ribnička and in this area permanently, uh, as I said. Well, containers are not a solution. I used to live in a container, and I know what it means. It means you are just waiting for somebody to expel you. It is not a house. You do not feel human there. Well, this is what I said. Yeah, I know. I'm, don't take it personally. Uh, this is just a question. I think we should think about this, because you need to pay for these containers. It costs money, and this is again a temporary solution. The Roma will once again be resettled. Uh, so it's better to find some permanent solutions immediately to build something. But maybe we can discuss this later on in private. Yes, uh, 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 let's, uh, huh? okay, then Mr. Toche. I come from Macedonia, and thank God we have not had a disaster of this kind, but what came to my mind now, and in order to to save some money before you find a more permanent solution, possibly you can use some empty capacities, uh, some empty buildings that you have, former barracks or schools. Uh, possibly you can also provide Roma with the possibility to pay some private accommodation. This would probably cost less um, in this period until you find a permanent solution for them. Well, I have to be very frank. Uh, daily, the food, water, health uh, care, and transport of children to school costs uh, between six and seven, possibly 8,000 euros a day. We are giving that money for people who are not even Montenegrin nationals. Uh, 
the state of Kosovo, which we recognized as an independent country, has never even visited these people and it's their population. Nonetheless, we will act not only in accordance with international law, but also in accordance with the tradition of Montenegro. We will not expel anybody and we pr allow them to dislocate so they can move into the areas which are unpopulated in Montenegro, but they do not want to go anywhere else. They want to all, all to go to Podgorica, to the capital. So I don't believe that there is a real chance to save any money until we have some permanent solution for them. But thank you for the idea. Thank you. Well, in Bosnia and Herzegovina, we've had quite a lot of experience with the return of refugees, and we've had quite a lot of experience with collective accommodation. So the settlements, uh, the container settlements uh, are definitely, container camps are definitely not appropriate. We've given up on that practice uh, for a long time. Uh, but for all these years, so many years after the war, we still haven't managed to eradicate this practice of collective accommodation because as we move some beneficiaries of this accommodation somewhere else, other social categories come in. Uh, so um, when we are talking about uh, temporary solutions, possibly uh, Hadina had in mind certain barracks, uh, certain prefabricated houses which can be set up quickly within a period of several months and they can be used for a certain period of time until a more permanent solutions are found. But these are all examples of social housing, so these are not proper houses. Um, something that Bosnia and Herzegovina has initiated, we learned a lesson from the situation in Butmir. Some of you probably remember the situation uh, in Belgrade because we uh, had this housing which was inappropriate from the point of view of Roma traditions and Roma needs. And this is why we started doing something else in Bosnia. Now we are trying to stabilize the situation uh, there where Roma live in their settlements uh, which can be legalized, uh, so there where they have some property that they own. Uh, the other possibility is to build entirely new housing units somewhere else. And the third possibility is to provide social housing in certain towns, Zenica, Bihać, and some other towns, which Roma can then have access to together with all other categories of uh, social beneficiaries. Um, Something else that worries us is uh, the same thing that's happening in Montenegro now. We also have a category of homeless persons, persons coming from uh, Kosovo, Macedonia, and some other areas of former Yugoslavia. Uh, they um, sort of uh, have no uh, residence uh, regulated, they are not registered anywhere, and they also n lack housing. So whenever we are discussing these issues, we have to take into consideration several aspects. And I believe that in um, the decade, what we lack is uh, some discussion, elaboration of high quality solutions. And uh, we need to really consider the core of the problem, the core of the Roma migration. How come that they uh, do not stay in certain areas? How come that they go to areas which are close to large urban uh, centers and which then causes problems? For example, we had problems with Roma. Uh, 
in Sarajevo who settled an area where drinking water is being piped and this was a problem. Uh, so there are many problems of that kind. People always gravitate towards large towns because they offer more chances for survival, uh, but that causes other types of problems. So just as our colleague from the World Bank put it, uh, you see that there are data which are very worrisome. And when we um, tried to analyze the needs in Bosnia and Herzegovina, we started from the sheer statistical data. And the problems always seem to be the same, money and the political will. So we need to see whether the local community is willing to provide a high quality solution. And on the other hand, whether people that are involved in these problems are uh, capable enough, whether they're skillful enough to design certain solutions and whether they're sensitive enough uh, to be able to work together with the Roma and allow them to manage their communities in the way in, the way they would, in which they wish to do so. So there are really uh, plenty of issues that need to be taken into consideration when we are trying to find solutions for the Roma. And I hope that in the future, we will discuss more concrete, specific problems within the framework of the decade. Thank you. Mr. Kajtrasi. I have a question for Mr. Delic. I recently visited Montenegro, and as soon as I arrived, I went to visit the Konig settlement. I was shocked when I turned up there. Since I come from Kosovo, I felt compassion for them. And when I heard about their problems, I was deeply moved. The social welfare they receive is very small, barely enough to survive on one meal a day, taking us back to the years uh, between 1940 and 45 of the past century. You mentioned that these are nationals of Kosovo. Uh, the government of Kosovo is accused of doing nothing. On the one hand, uh, we are hearing about a temporary solution and a permanent solution. So this means either that they will return to Kosovo or that they are not wanted there. As regards containers, we have a lot of experience with containers. We have a settlement called Struge, which was a temporary solution some 10 years ago, but it's still in place, uh, this temporary solution. In summer, it's extremely hot in containers, and in winter, it's extremely cold. Thank you. Yes, you are right. Uh, Corning uh, Camp 1 and 2 were both temporary solutions, and for 11 years, uh, there were these sheds. We are now looking for another temporary solution before we define what we're going to do on a permanent basis. The number uh, of inhabitants uh, is decreasing. The number varies. So uh, some of them, when they are able to return to Kosovo in a sustainable way, they actually go back. They go home. But over a long period of time, about uh, 1,700 uh, people in the broader area, not just uh, those affected by the fire, uh, have linked their fate to integration in Montenegro. So they want to stay and be integrated into the local community. It's not just a housing problem. If we had the funds now to build a house for every family overnight, we will still not have solved the problems as regards the sustainability. 
of their remaining in Montenegro. They don't have jobs. These persons have every right. Uh, 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 they have social welfare, health care, social protection, access to education, access to all public services, just like citizens of Montenegro. So they have every right except the right to vote. However, uh, whether this is sustainable, how these people will continue to live in collective accommodation, I don't know how. When it comes to this location, we don't have a professional army. We have some barracks uh, where we do have a small professional army, but all other army facilities have been sold. Uh, schools are needed for um, education. Uh, so uh, we have some families in uh, uh, children's home in Biela, about 120 of them. Uh, some of them are in hospital. And some elderly people have uh, been placed uh, in a home for the elderly in Bielopolje. And we don't have any more capacities to deal with this problem. Yes. Uh, so I have one question from uh, Mr. Prague because we are, so we are um, close uh, neighbors. I'm from Czech Republic and I'm interested in his uh, purpose or measure about businessmen and not paying uh, taxes uh, if they uh, give a work for unemployment, uh, I think, Roma people. Uh, if you have um, information, if this uh, measure can really work, uh, because uh, in your country there are 80,000 uh, uh, Roma people and uh, uh, the social um, excluded uh, is, uh, has a very big rate, uh, if you think it uh, will be work. And if you can recommend uh, this uh, measure also to another countries, uh, I, um, if you have qu um, information, uh, how expensive it will be for a uh, state budget? Dear friends, uh, colleagues, we have to wrap up really because we are running out of, of time, even more than before. Uh, Nadir, do you still cons no. Okay, you step back. Huh? One, okay. but really the last one, and then Hello? Peter will answer. Hello. I wish to say hello to everyone. I am a Roma from Bulgaria living in Zagreb, and it's very painful for me to hear these things. If these Roma have been living in Montenegro all these years, why haven't they become nationals? Why haven't they been granted citizenship uh, during the election campaign? I uh, used to help uh, Roma uh, with their citizenship applications. There are Roma living in Croatia for 40 years who have their houses here, uh, and they still haven't uh, uh, been granted citizenship. Uh, so this is the first thing I would like to ask Montenegro uh, to solve. Uh, people are living on welfare, 400 or 430 kuna uh, per month. They have to pay for their health care. Uh, if they don't uh, pay for three months, all their documents are taken from them. Another question, has the decade undertaken to return Roma from Kosovo uh, back to the homes that they lost? Thank you. Uh, question and 
there were some clarifications. Peter will answer the question, and, and uh, perhaps we may go through me translating it. Uh, he, he asked me also to clarify in the tra he was asking me about the translation and we we did confirm that uh, through english it perhaps didn't uh, capture exactly what uh, what he was saying and uh, uh, the 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 plans that, that sounded like already implemented these are plans this is a political statement that they made a week ago and the measures will be unveiled in october when he will be in the in the office already so these are plans rather than already existing uh, uh, reality. But now, to, as to your question. Mm -hmm. uh, ano, že, že uh, od... Yes, we že toto je cesta vpred, podpora podnikateľov, ktorí vytvoria pracovné miesta pre takýchto ľudí. That, uh, as to your question, yeah. As to your question, yes, we uh, do believe that is uh, uh, more advantageous uh, for the state as well as to the, for the individuals to give a tax. These are not stateless uh, people uh, who need Montenegrin uh, citizenship. These are people who are citizens of Kosovo. They have their country, Kosovo, uh, whose nationals they are. And in these 13 years, many people have applied for Montenegrin citizenship and been granted it. Uh, this is some 8,000 people, many of whom are Roma. But uh, these people are have the status of foreign nationals who are residing in Montenegro. And a foreign national with a permanent residence in Montenegro, has Montenegrin identity papers, and has every right except the right to vote.